All right, folks. I mean, I just wanted to tell you one thing that you should pay close attention when you're watching the media, right? When you're doing your own research in terms of doing business in the Democratic Republic of Congo, you really have to be very careful to what kind of or to what media you are getting your source of information from. Even if you go to Google, you know, or any other search engine online platform that are out there, and look up the Democratic Republic of Congo, I guarantee you the first article that you will come across is talking about the war in the eastern region of Congo. Don't ever let anybody fool you. A lot of these businessmen and women that are so prosperous and wealthy pay close attention to the nature of the business. They're making all this money because they're doing business in Africa and more precisely in Congo. So don't get it twisted. All right, folks. So there are a lot of things that we can agree on when we talk about this type of topics, all right? So you guys know I'm a huge advocate of encouraging young Congolese, specifically in African communities that live in a diaspora, to go back to their respective countries to invest. Because I believe that the only way we get to develop our African nations is by us diasporans going back and investing more. Because we cannot always depend on uh, foreign investors to come home because a foreigner is necessarily not there to make anything or your life better than it always is, all right? They really don't give a crap about your social status, your social uh, way of living or your living standards, per se, because that's the government job to make sure that their local population actually are well-fed or they, you know, rejoice Oh, so, you know, similar opportunities uh, compared to others, all right? Investors, they only go there to make their money and they get out. But only us Congolese, we have the luxury of going back home to invest in our own countries and hopefully staying there and living a much better life. Because a lot of times when we move to the West, we have a tendency of, of thinking, or at least we think that, by moving here, we're going to have a better life and everything is going to be uh, like a rose all around us. That is not true. We've all came here with a certain expectations, but when we got here to the West, the, the reality is totally different. It's far from the stories that we've been told because America, they have sold their... I mean, they sold the image of the Hollywood movies that we all used to watch. But the reality, though, it's not the same. The lifestyle here, it's, oh my God, I do not even want to get into that. But I'll give you a couple more examples in terms of the things that I'm about to talk about. So you'll probably get an idea of what I'm talking about. So you guys know that I am a farmer. I'm starting to identify myself more as a farmer because I know that's my long-term goal I would eventually farm full-time I can't tell you when exactly but depending on how things go in the near future if I get everything that I need around my farm sure I'll be moving back to make sure I do it the right way and not needing to come back here in America for economic reasons okay so let's just put that out there and just be more specific about that. All right, I'll play a couple of scenarios for you. All right, so you guys get an idea of what kind of environments that we all live in when we're here in the West. So it is not a secret that we know how the West in the history, that they, how they've always exploited humankind. Humanity, it is like their number one source of exploitation because they know you need human beings to be able to achieve certain um, objectives because look at it this way, even during slavery, right? They needed labor to be able to manufacture the things and, you know, to mass produce a lot of things because these people are so thirst of money. They just don't 
ever get enough of it. They went beyond needing uh, manpower or human uh, labor force to achieve their goals. Now they're starting to replace human beings by a robot. They want machinery that can produce 10 times faster or more than a human being can, you know, is capable to produce because they're just trying to make way more money. So the level of exploitation has reached its core to where human beings are more exhausted nowadays. So think of it this way, he, especially here in America, people understand if you give someone a phone call, they don't answer the phone or they don't even get back to you. Like people don't bother anymore because everybody know the answer you're going to get from that individual if you ask them why they didn't pick up the phone. It's either, oh, I was at work or I was just getting back from a lunch break. Therefore, I couldn't keep, pick, keep up, uh, pick up the phone. Or I'm sorry, man, I was sleeping from working a 12-hour shift or a double shift or whatever the case may be because people are always tired. People are always, you know, coming up with excuses that is work-related to justify why they did not, uh, you know, help out or do such things or whatever the case may be, all right? Because the level of the, the, the intensity of workforce, it has consumed people's ability to perform other things outside of, uh, you know, even, you know, outside of work. Uh, people are less productive even, you know, within their family because the expectation is so real. But when we talk about going back to the motherland to invest, you guys know how Africans will roll. We're not always about all making money. Africa is built upon, is built around society, is built, is built around, you know, collective efforts. Like we live in society, we live in family, we live collectively. The way we are raised is like by, you know, being together. I mean, that is the opposite of how the West operates. West, the West uh, uh, promotes individualism, I mean, individualism, uh, uh, you know, whereas in Africa, it is the total, you know, it's the total opposite. So we're not always about the money, okay? The money is not always everything because I know people that work three jobs and they still can barely make it. They can still can barely make end meet. And on the top of that, they also have like a lot of debts that they have to reimburse whether the bank or whatever financial entities that they might have used to borrow money to do certain things in life. But even that is still not enough. But we're coming from a continent where, you know, you don't need a huge capital to start whatever type of investment that you more interested in. That's why I always advise people, everything takes time. And patience is the number one of friends that we could all possibly have. Because if you start small, you give it more time, eventually it'll get bigger and you will be just fine. Just let's all stop, you know, all the, the, the complacency, stop of uh, thinking that because I lived in the West and I go to Africa, everything should be handed to me in a silver, in a silver platter. No, that's not how things work. In order for you to uh, be successful, you have to earn it. You really have to work hard for it. But I believe you don't have to be exhausted the way the West use human being here to achieve that, you know, that goal or to achieve that objective. So the money that we all make, we could use that to go back home to invest. All right, let me just jump from one topic to another. Let's talk about food products, for instance. Bro, just because of how the, 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 the mass production of food or, you know, different commodities are, the, you, know, you know, are done here in America, people are consuming trash foods that are rushing people into death into heart problems heart diseases and many you know health related uh, anomalies because you know they only care about the money they want to hire as many people as they can they want to put as much products out there on the market as they possibly can so when people consume them they their their, their health deteriorate now you need to get a gym membership thus giving more money into the gym industry and like 
literally the money you're making is buying food, going to the gym, and doing everything else. And at the end of the day, you just find yourself broke over, over, and over again. People are so busy that sometimes we don't even have time to make our own meal. Sometimes we don't even have time to cook at home. A lot of us sometimes you have to go, you, you have to, you know, or use the, the, you know, the drive-through, buy food, park your car somewhere, eat your lunch, dinner, or breakfast, or whatever it is, depending on the, the you know, the time of the day, and you go about your day. Some people even just eat as they driving to work or they driving home from work because they know they're so tired they may not even have time to go home and cook and that is unacceptable and we all know the kind of life we lived in Africa the freedom is there and it's still there is waiting for all of us while we keep wasting our time here knowing that we can live a much better life than what we are offered to uh, here in the West while we're still wasting time continuing to make promises that we're going to go back home to start our investment when we're going through these type of struggles here in the West. Listen, guys, I always say this to many people. Like, I don't care if you're an engineer, you're a doctor. As long as you have to wake up at a certain time of the day to go to work and have your paycheck signed by somebody else, technically, you still don't have the freedom economic. Like, the, you know, the, the freedom, the financial freedom that we all, because that is the true freedom that we all looking for. It's the financial freedom. As long as you have that, that's it. And most of us, that's why we're talking about this because we don't have it yet. But our goal is to have it. I always say to my people when I have conversations with them is that like, listen, I'm not looking to become a millionaire or, or a billionaire or whatever. All I'm looking in life is to be able to live comfortably, to have a car when I need it, to have to purchase a home with a swimming pool if that's what I want, or to send my children to like private schools or to like good schools so they can have a better education. It doesn't matter whether it is here in America or in the Congo, but I would love it to be in the Congo because that's where I'm from, that's where my heart has always been, and that's where I see myself living the rest of my life at. Because life expectancy here in this country, it is so messed up. Don't even think one second that coming here, you're probably going to have, you know, a longer life. Because isolation is real here. Especially for like senior citizens, like people that are over like 50 or even 60 years old coming here to in America. And saying that, oh, I'm only coming here to relax because I've lived my whole life. No, that is a huge mistake. Don't ever do that to yourself. Because you will come here, you won't have nobody to talk to. Because everybody you ever live with, whether it's your your your, your, your family members or your friends, everybody gonna, are going to be gone to work. And you'll be left home alone, all stressed out. You don't have nobody to talk to. And then when they return, you probably have like a, a short conversation and they have to go to sleep because they're trying to get themselves back up and running for the next day at work. So, but living in Africa, on the other hand, no matter the issues we have there, but overall, freedom and the enjoyment of life over there, it's top notch. There are a lot of YouTube channels out there. Go watch certain YouTube channels where they talk about how excited that African Americans or even, you know, American, Native Americans are having in Africa because life there is just crazy. You know, things are much more affordable, whether it's food or even, you know, housing, depending on the type, you know, the type of area you prefer to live in. But People are just spending their time here thinking that it's going to be okay. And it has already been more than 10 years. How long are you going to continue to hope when you can just take action now, get up and go back home, start your investment, and forget the fact that you came here in America because we've been lied to. All the things that we knew or we've been told about the West is not true. That's why... I've never worked in a Congo before I came to America, so I went to school here, I did all my training here, I'm working here as a cop, and I know the money that I'm making now here, I'm not going to mess around with it, because I know exactly what I do with what I want to do with it. You guys watch my channel, you guys know where my money is being put to. 
I'm sending my money over there because I want to build my farm and build as many things that I can possibly build or I can fit on there. So when I all the, the, the activities are up and running, I don't have to like come back here and, 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 and worry about money or bills or any issues that's money related. So I can just be there and live my best life. That's all we're looking for, right? So I invite you in 2023, brothers and sisters in the diaspora, to go back to our country, the Congo, start our investment. Do not let anybody hold you back. We have to own our country. We have to own our economy. We have to uh, let people know that only Congolese have the power to lift our country from the position it is it is in right now. We have to lift our country from the kneeling position and back up. In unity, we are gonna get it done. Thanks again for tuning in to watch my video. Until the next one, I'll see you soon. Peace.